We're gonna go over TENS unit and I'm gonna kind of go over it with all the specifics and Meredith here is going to be working as our patient so that way you guys can really see how to interact with the patient when you're giving this. As a reminder, TENS is what we use to treat pain. You can use it for other things, but very rarely do athletic trainers use it in the clinic to treat something beyond pain because we have better, bigger things like on our stim units that allow us to do that. We really do this when we're on the road or we're trying to send it home with the patient to help them treat pain. So that's really what I want you guys to focus in on. There are always little boxes and you can actually tell your athletes and patients that they can go buy one for as cheap as like 40 bucks at their local um, pharmacy. I know you can get them at like Walgreens and CVS and HEB and, and all those other places as well. And then when you look at them, they should always have two dials. So see that? And then they'll have the hookups that plug in. And then as you open them, and they all open a little bit differently and they all kind of have slightly different settings. But this one has a pulse width and a pulse rate. When we're just doing a single side, all you're gonna really change is this pulse width. And what we're really looking at is 80 to 200 for uh, just doing one of these biphasic treatments. And then you can also set a continuous time, 30 minutes or 60 minutes. And again, it depends upon what you're trying to do with your patient. A lot of times 30 minutes is enough, but sometimes they wanna leave it running for a longer period of time. You just have to know why you're doing it and be able to justify it. The pulse rate on this, the only reason why you would do that is if you have both of them set up. And I'll show you how to do both. Um, but I think that's something to just kind of make sure that I point out. So if you're only going to be treating with two electrodes, you would take it, plug it into the side that you intend to use, and then make sure that you put your pads correctly spaced apart. And so when we look at our electrodes, the size matters. The circle, the square, they're basically the same, so it's not gonna make a big difference, but if we have a square versus big rectangles, the amount of area that they cover. So this is going to have, um, it's gonna be a stronger force directly underneath these and they're not going to get as deep as the big rectangular ones because they take up more area. So bigger area equals less strong current directly underneath. And then the closer they are together, the more superficial the current's gonna get. And then the further apart they are, the deeper the current's going to get. So that's really something to think about. If Meredith here had a really superficial injury, I would wanna keep these pads really, really close together if she has a deeper injury to her rectus femoris, I would want to spread them out a lot more across her legs so that way it's going deeper into her muscle belly. So those are things to really think about as you're applying uh, the pads to your patient. You need to make sure that they have really good connection on the individual uh, as you're doing this kind of stuff. And really, like I use these in the bus a lot because you don't have a big stem machine with you, so they work really nice when we do this. So then they're gonna have two different connectors on them. So you would just plug them straight in. And then the next thing that you need to do is explain to your patient what they should be feeling. Um, for this, one, you wanna make sure, like verify that where they're experiencing pain is in the middle of these because it's going to, they'll feel it underneath the electrodes, but they should also be feeling it throughout the middle of this area. So if you have it here, but her pain, sorry, I'm gonna move this so that you guys can see a little bit better. If, say you have the electrodes here and this is the middle, but her pain is really over here, we need to move the electrodes over so that way where her pain is, is in the middle of the electrodes. So really where you place the electrodes is really, really important. Um, and they really need to make sure that they are encompassing where their painful area is. Um, so yeah, really think about that kind of stuff as you're applying these uh, electrodes and doing all of these various treatments on your patients. So then the next thing that you need to do is make sure that you explain to them exactly what it is that they're supposed to be feeling. So for this, when we're just treating pain, all she should feel is maybe some tingling. Okay. It could be a strong tingle, but as soon as like you start feeling like your muscles are bumping, that's too much and you need to tell me we need to back down. So as soon as you start feeling something, say something, okay? Got See it. something, say something. And then once it gets to that like strong tingle, be like it's getting there, it's getting there, and then like that's enough. Okay. 
and that's the most that they should be feeling. They shouldn't be going over a strong tingle. If their muscle is bumping, you've moved to a completely different setting for what we would be doing. So with this, when you hook somebody up, always make sure that it is on the off setting. I've seen people hook them up and it's turned all the way on and their muscle immediately goes to this massive cramp and it's hurting. That is not a good thing. Don't do that to them. So you would open it up and make sure that your setting is correct. Remember for this, it's 80 to 200. So we can start a little bit lower if it's her first time ever doing it. And remember, we're talking about pulse width. So how much space in is in between each one of the pulses. And then on this, we have the pulse rate. And currently I have it set at 70, meaning how many pulses are going on per second as we send this through. So for this one, it's currently set at 70, and I think I'll just turn it up a little bit to about 95. So she has 95 pulses per second, and the pulse width is currently at about 130 because it's in between the 100 and the 150. And then I'm gonna take this dial that's on the same side as this guy, and then just turn it on, and the light should come on for some reason, it doesn't on this one, <laughs> but you just very slowly turn it up, Start to feel it, okay. And then we're going, feel good. A strong tingle. Strong right tingle there. right there, okay. So then we stop and we make sure that the timer setting is correct. So I have it for 30 minutes, not that we're gonna do that. And then we would set it and kind of walk away. Now, the what happens is people are going to accommodate to what's happening to them. So in like five minutes, you would wanna come back and say, are you still feeling the same strong tingle? And she is going to definitely say no. No. Because it's going to start getting less because her body, her nerves are going to accommodate it. By the way, we're looking at those B beta fibers that are coming through. So they're the nice big fibers that are really doing stimulation. So you don't have to open any of the rest of this. You would just take this and I won't do it because it's already hasn't been five minutes. But you would just very gingerly turn this up a little bit until she feels that feeling again. So say she's doing this for 30 minutes six times or at least five times during that treatment you're going to come and you're going to turn this up just a little bit to see if we can get it going a little bit more if it gets to the point where we're at max max on this is eight and she's still not feeling the same tingle then we can start changing the pulse width or the pulse rate to make it so that way she gets that same tingle back but it's good if you only change one thing at a time you don't want to change the pulse width the pulse rate and the intensity in the same setting. So just change one, ideally the intensity to begin with, and once you max out the intensity, if you max out the intensity, then you start changing one of the other two. Okay? All right. Um, just really quickly, so I'm gonna turn this all the way down to off, and we can do actually an interferential treatment, meaning that we put two leads on, so say again, her pain is right here in the middle. We would come around and make sure that the pads are surrounding that same area and that lead one is straight in a line and then lead two is straight in a line. And always make sure that these are really plugged in good. What I've seen sometimes is they start getting loose. So I've had to like actually tape them before so that way they're not falling out and then make sure that you take this guy and you plug it all the way in. And so now that we're doing an interferential treatment, the pulse rate becomes more important when you're doing things than the pulse width, okay? And now we're doing two. So with the pulse width, we'll leave it at, we'll say 150, and we're not gonna change any of these middle two things. And we're gonna turn this pulse rate down to about 70, which is below, usually we're a little bit above that. And so what we're going to do then is we're gonna start here and we'll turn on lead one and lead two, all the same instructions. No muscle jumping, strong tingle. So tell me when it starts. Okay. And we go lead one, lead two, lead one, lead two, lead one, lead two. And tell me before it really gets like strong. Right there. Okay. So right now on lead one, she's about at a two and the same for lead two as well. And then if we go to the pulse rate, what we can do is start changing that. So right now, how would you describe the feeling? It's like, it's tingling, it's kind of buzzing. Okay, 
and that's perfect. So if I take the pulse rate and I'm gonna increase it a little bit. That's stronger right there. What does that feel like? It's like a stronger tingle. Okay, it, but it's not hurting? No. Okay, uh, and it's not making your muscle contract? Mm -hmm. Okay, and is it as much tingle as you would feel comfortable having? Yes. Okay, all important questions to ask, don't put them into a position where they're going to be uncomfortable. And then again, you would close it and then every five minutes come back and then change the intensity for each time. And then once you max that out, then you can look at changing the pulse rate again, okay? All right, but once you get there, again, make sure you turn it to off, not increasing the intensity as you do this. And then you take everything apart and put it all away. And then you wanna inspect the skin to make sure there's no irritation or anything else underneath these. Uh, depending upon where you're at, these are really reusable. And so you can clean them off with alcohol pads. Notice I'm not currently doing that right this second because we're teaching things. Um, but it's a good idea to do that. And a lot of times what we end up doing is, and I've done this in clinic a lot, where these would get her initials written on them and they would always be Meredith's. And then that's a good way to make it so you don't have to worry about skin diseases or anything else getting transferred between people. These become her pads and once they're done, then we throw them away and we don't have to worry about other people um, or, or cross contamination or anything else going on. All right, okay, that's the TENS unit.